Hello, and welcome to the Cook Memorial Public Library podcast, where we invite you to spend a few minutes with the staff at Cook Library. I'm Nate Goss, one of the librarians there. Uh, and your host for this episode. This week, we bring you another segment of Locally Sourced, where we have familiar faces from businesses right here in Libertyville and Vernon Hills come on the podcast to talk about a book that has special significance in their lives. And today, I'm here with Anna Santos Gitzinger from Orinoco Fitness. Uh, It's a yoga, Pilates, and Zumba fitness studio right off Milwaukee Avenue in Libertyville. So welcome, Anna. Thank you for having me. Before we jump right into the book, we are here in your studio right now, Orinoco Fitness. Uh, Do you want to just take a minute and tell us a little bit about what you do here? Yes. um, So Orinoco Fitness is a non-contract studio. We want to invite people to exercise, relax, get refreshed, and belong to a community. So we make um, our spaces very inviting, very clean. What sets us apart is that we don't force you to sign a long-time contract where you can pay as you go and you can for, try your first class for free. So you can always come in, try a class, see how it fits, if it fits your lifestyle, um, and then invite you to come in and then be part of our community, grow with us, learn. We provide classes as well as many workshops and education events to help people feel refreshed and balanced. And how long have you guys been open? We have been open for three years. And it's a really nice space as I'm, I'm kind of, I, I've never been in here before and I walked in and, and I think you're right, like the, it's just a very clean and very soothing atmosphere here. So um, why don't we go ahead and uh, shift gears into the, the book. Uh, what is the book that you would like to uh, talk about? The book is called The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. He's a Brazilian author and uh, it's my All-time favorite book. All-time favorite book. Okay. (laughs) Do you remember the first time you read The Alchemist? Um, I read The Alchemist when I was about 23. My mom gave me the book. Um, It was actually in Spanish. I'm originally from Venezuela, so my mom gave me the book there. I was living there, and uh, I was just a young person, you know, looking for uh, what I was going to be doing next and right out of college. And she said, I love this book. Somebody recommended it. She gave it to me. And it's been very, very special because um, it talks about destiny and going after your dreams and trusting that if you have faith, the universe, or in this case, for me, God will make sure that you get it. But you have to have that faith. And so, I mean, at that time, when I was only 23, I read it, and uh, then later on, um, I gave it to my husband, or the person I was dating, who is now my husband, and I gave it to him in English, so it actually has a special meaning for both of us. Sure. Um, Yeah, and and, uh, so growing up in Venezuela, Venezuela, I know this this came out, I think, in Spanish in like 1988, and then in English it was 93. Uh, Was it a very popular book in Venezuela? Or were you in Venezuela at the time, or were you already here in America? Yes, I was in Venezuela at the time. I came here when I was 17 with a scholarship, so I went to college here in the United States. But I had come back to Venezuela, and my mom had the book or found the book in Spanish, and it was becoming very popular. Now, I know that not many people knew about the book here, um, so when I gave it to my husband, he's like, oh, I never heard of the book. But I know in the recent years, like in the last 10 years, it's become more popular. Like I've heard more people talk about it or just mention it. So I know that he had, I mean, the base and the popularity of the book has grown. And it's now 25 years. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's, it's definitely had um, a legacy to it in its own, even mm-hmm. though the book is often about destiny and legacy. But it, yeah. it's uh, it, at the library, it's one of our book club uh, selections, and it's often used for book clubs. And I think mm-hmm. there is something just very enduring about the book. Mm-hmm. It was recommended to me by my college roommate, and it was as mm-hmm. we were graduating, and we were both trying to figure out what we wanted to do with our lives. And I, I think that this book really speaks to that, like yeah. when you don't really know what yeah. you want to do. But the part that I will always remember and and is really kind of hammered in the book is this idea of um, the universe conspiring to help you achieve your personal legend. Yes. And um, do you find, uh, as as now it's been several years since readings, do you find that's been true in your life? It has been very true. I mean, uh, so it all started with first wanting to find that person that was going to be right for me. Uh, the person I was going to share my life with. My life with. I, I, I had a pretty good idea what I wanted to do in terms of a career, but I felt that 
I was missing that special someone, and then I felt that because I read the book, I attracted this person to my life. Hmm. So I felt that the book really says, if you believe it and it's your, it's your destiny and, and, and you write it as your truth, then you will attract that what you want. And what I first wanted for me was that, that's that companionship, that love. And my husband and I got engaged shortly after I read the book and then obviously I gave him the book. But then now it's been more about my professional success or, or what I've been wanting to do in terms of opening this business and having balance in my life with my family. I have two boys. Okay. And juggling it all could be overwhelming. But keeping that in mind, that 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 journey or that destination saying this is what I want to achieve and and really you know just trusting that that's where I was going to go um then obviously it didn't it didn't happen overnight I mean I did do a lot of things before I opened the business but I knew that eventually I was going to do something really special where I allowed I was able to help other people and serve and you know, just really feel very fulfilled professionally, and that's where I'm at now. So, I mean, at this point, when I see people that are struggling or depressed or they feel lost with anything in their lives, with their health or where they're at in terms of a relationship or professionally, I recommend the book because it could really help you in any of those things, in any of those areas. Now, maybe we should back up a little bit. Uh, for those who have never even heard of this book before, yeah. the way we're talking about it, you would almost think it was like a nonfiction self-help book, but it's mm-hmm. not that at all. Um, do you want to maybe just tell a little bit about what the actual book, The Alchemist, is? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a fable. Um, so it's a story about a boy, um, a shepherd, who um, lives in, in Spain, and he, um, he ends up going from Spain into Africa and he's looking for his destiny he wants to become an alchemist he wants to turn lead into gold or Mm -hmm. he wants to find an alchemist I forget exactly if he wanted to be an alchemist or he wanted to find an alchemist and uh, in all these travels he finds people um, like an old lady that told him um, you know you will find that treasure that you're looking for he experienced different things that showed him that the universe would help him find that. He just had to believe it. Hmm. But it is about the personal legend of the shepherd and then the shepherd becoming a master alchemist. I mean, he did become very powerful in terms of making gold, but of course it's it's more of a symbolic development. I think what they're trying, what the author, Paulo Coelho, is trying to tell us is that your dreams don't have a limit. You know, I think fables as a storytelling uh, method, they're kind of unique and, and kind of rare with American audiences as adults. Mm. You know, we're all mm-hmm. familiar with like the Aesop's fables and things like that as children, but we mm-hmm. don't really read fables that often as adults. Do you think that's a, is that a more common storytelling method in mm-hmm. Latin America or was that something that you grew up with or was it just as unique for you as well? I think it's very unique to this author. Um, I think he just decided that he wanted to use the story to help people believe in themselves and believe that God had a plan for them. Um, so I think he's trying to stay, you know, non-denominational or, or very neutral by saying the universe. but. Mm-hmm. I think he just felt like he could develop a very, very um, nice story that people could identify with to find hope. I also think you have a really unique perspective because you've read it in both Spanish and English. Um, and do you have a preference or do you think mm-hmm. there's something lost in translation at all? Um, so I really loved it when I read it in Spanish because I think um, Spanish and Portuguese are so similar that I think they were able to almost translate it word by word. Mm. But then when you go from Spanish to English, you do have to switch some things. Um, so, yeah, I, my favorite version of the book is in Spanish. But I think the translation does a good job, um, you know, capturing the essence of the book. Um, there is a quote, when you commit to a change or a new direction, the whole universe compares to help you. So um, that is something that really stuck with me and that you can find several times throughout the book written in different ways. But um, this is one that, you know, it really just says whatever it is you want in your heart, even if you don't know what it is, you can find it. For me, it's, it's been great because I feel like every time I've achieved a big milestone, I can read the book again and then it, it helps me figure out what my next milestone will be. 
Yeah, actually, I think so. that's a really good point that you bring up because um, I could see someone listening to this and thinking, especially if they're a little older, like, mm -hmm. I'm already kind of set, you know? Like, I don't need to read a book to tell me what my destiny or legend is. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of past that. And I think what you're saying here is that there's still something in it for people of all ages. Everyone, everyone. I mean, if you're in your 40s, in your 50s, and... You know, the, we can always grow. We always learn and grow no matter how old we are. So if you pick up the book now and you're in your 50s, you're going to find that there are things that you can still do and want for you, even if you're very happy and content with what you already have, because the book is just opening your mind to the possibilities. All right. Well, Anna, I, I just want to mm -hmm. thank you for coming on the podcast and sharing uh, your thoughts on your favorite book, The Alchemist. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I love talking about the book. Also, I wanted to just, if someone, you know, they heard what you were saying about Orinoco Fitness and they're really curious, how, what's the best way to get plugged into Orinoco Fitness? To get plugged in, um, if you're big into social media, immediately go look for us at, at Facebook. Um, I post my class schedule there and usually drop in is fine. You can just come in for any class. You don't have to call, just show up. We are adding some new classes in the fall. So if you're still not sure when they start, give us a call. Yeah. Um, and then um, online, if you just go to uh, orinocofitness.com, our website has a lot of the information that, um, that you need for the different programs that yeah. we have. So all ages, fitness levels, um, anyone who's over 16 can attend a class on their own. Well, th thanks again, <laughs> Anna. All right, listeners. So if you want to read The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, just uh, search for it in the library's online catalog, which can be found on our website, www.cooklib.org. We actually have The Alchemist available in regular print, large type, CD, audiobook, ebook, and it's always available as an e audiobook through our free Hoopla app. Uh, don't forget to also visit Shelf Life, the library's blog. That blog's address is shelflife.cooklib.org. And if you ever want to get in touch and leave some feedback, send us a message, webmaster at cooklib.org. If you're enjoying this podcast, keep spreading the word. And if you get a moment, leave us a kind rating on iTunes. We will be back soon, but until then, keep reading, keep watching, and keep listening. Mm -hmm.